I'm going to talk to you about two things. Two important things that the apostles did. Paul did it. Peter did it. John did it. Probably, if you read your Bible, one of these things, we know Elisha did it. We know. We know for sure Elisha did it. But the two things are this. Number one, what Jesus said to the rich young ruler, he said, there's one thing you lack. He said, if you want to be perfect, other translations say complete, sell everything you have and give to the poor. He said everything. Peter did it. Peter walked away from his business. At one point he said, silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give unto you. Rise and walk. In another place he says, Lord, we left everything we have to follow you. Paul, we know, did it. Paul did that. John. John did it. Anybody who ended up... Now, here's another thing that the apostles did. So that's the number one thing. That's number one, is they walked away from everything they had. And the Bible says Elijah did too. When Elijah went to Elisha, Elisha sacrificed his bull, went and said goodbye to his parents, and walked away from everything. But here's the second thing that the apostles did. They lived in captivity and in jail and were put to death for their faith. Those are the two things that the great men of God all did. Now, we see Elijah was raptured up. Kind of like the end time saints who make it to... Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. He who endures to the end is going to be raptured up out of this place. But it's only after the mark of the beast comes out. And after, here's how you know that the, that the rapture and the harvest of the earth is, is coming very close, very, very close. Is when prophecy by prophetic word, by the Holy Ghost, you hear this prophecy. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. Because that means that the, everybody who, who's called to be a martyr and to be put to death for their faith is going to say, I made it to this point, it's time for me to go. And they're going to turn themselves in and they're going to surrender their lives. And the Bible says they love not their life so much as to shrink from death. And those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. In other words, once the number of saints to be put to death for their faith is complete, that's Revelation chapter 6, 11. Get your Bible out and look it up. Once that number is complete, then the harvest of the earth happens. But before, just before that number is complete, God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And just before that, it's the mark of the beast comes out, and this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. That's all in Revelation chapter 14. So what are the two things that the apostles did? One, they gave everything they had, walked away from everything, all the things of this world, laid it all down at the feet of Jesus, and followed Jesus. That's one. And two, they went into captivity and were put to death for their faith. What does that mean, captivity? That means they went to jail. They went to prison. They lived out the last remaining days of their life in a jail cell. Apostle Paul, we know, was writing the letters. John, we know, wrote the book of Revelation. And then they were put to death. Well, John, he wasn't even put to death. He, he, he endured to the very end somehow. But the point is, when the mark of the beast comes out, guess what? You're going to have to walk away from everything you have. Just like what Jesus said to the rich young ruler. If you want to be complete, walk away from everything you have. Give to the poor. Come follow me. What's going to happen when the mark of the beast comes out? You think they're going to let you stay living in your home? Do you really think they're going to let you buy gas if they say you can't buy and sell anything without that mark of the beast? You're not going to be able to get fuel for your car. How are you going to make it to work? They might even pass a law. Anybody who doesn't get the mark of the beast can no longer be legitimately employed. Now your employer is going to call you into, your, into his office. 
and says, I know, I know you're our top guy. I know you make more sales than anyone else. I know you've been managing a group of sales reps for the last five years, and it's always the number one sales team. I know you practically run this company, but guess what? This just came down. Legislation just was passed. You got to get that mark or else we got we got to fire you. We got to let you go. The whole business is going to go under if we don't abide by this, this law. And your boss is going to be like, I got it. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a $15,000 bonus right now if you just go in today and get that. But we don't want to lose you. You're our top sales rep. And you're going to have to walk away from everything you have, just like the apostles did, just like Jesus said to the rich young ruler. And then you know what happens next? Later, you're going to have to go into captivity, just like the apostles went into captivity. And you know what happens next? Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And if you're not put to death for your faith, okay, Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. Then maybe you'll be like Elijah who was raptured up. Everyone who lives during the time of the mark of the beast will have to live like Elijah. And Elisha, you're going to have to walk away from the things of this world. You're going to have to be led by the Holy Spirit everywhere you go, hiding out in the wilderness. You're going to have to call down, if it's not time for you to go, you're going to call down fire from heaven in the name of Jesus. It's going to burn up all your enemies. Or like the Apostle Paul happened to him, or like happened, uh, I think it was Elisha, he struck the whole group of them with blindness. Imagine they're coming to get you. They're coming to get you and your family. You're just hiding up in the wilderness saying, God, whatever's your will, I'm ready to go, but whatever's your will. And God says, no, it's not time yet. Pray right now and strike them with blindness. And then you walk right down, walk right through, right, right past a whole troop of military personnel who got AKs and M16s and A4s and grenades and M9s and tanks and all that you just walk right past all of them and they're there just to try to find you but it's not your time yet the point is when the mark of the beast comes out you're gonna have to walk away from everything just like jesus said to the rich young ruler just like peter said we left everything to follow you lord just like peter said just before the miracle the miracle he said, silver and gold have I not, but what I have I give unto you. Kaboom! Rise and walk. Why did he say that? Why did he say he doesn't have nothing? I got nothing to give you but the power of God. That's the way it's going to be. Just like Elijah in the wilderness, there's going to be miracles, signs and wonders, and the power of God, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And just like the miracles of Jesus... Why is it that most of the great miracles of Jesus was some sort of supernatural meal? Think about that. Five loaves and two fish or whatever it was, and he feeds 5,000? I think with a miracle like that, you can feed your family. I'm just saying, when the mark of the beast comes out, praise God, all the lukewarm... All the lukewarm are going to quickly fall away. The disobedient are going to fall away. Brother will betray brother unto death. And you're going to be running around like Elijah in the wilderness. Seeking God and believing God for miracles and signs and wonders. And then one day God's going to say, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And you're going to know. Mm, power of the Holy Spirit is going to touch you. You're going to get tears in your eyes and you're going to say, Lord, I'll be with you soon. I'll be with you soon. And you're going to turn yourself in. Meanwhile, there's other people who, who are out in the wilderness saying, God, when are you going to return? Just like Elijah. He says, I'm going to be taken up today. And you're going to know it. You're going to know it. And then when the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith, that's Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. When that number is complete, those who are alive, the Bible says, we who are alive and remain will be captured up or raptured up to meet with him in the air. 
Now that's the right interpretation of that scripture where he says, we who are alive and remain. Why does he say we who are alive and remain? Because we, we who are alive means we who have not yet been put to death for our faith. And we who remain means we who remain faithful to Jesus. Booyah! And if you can't put those scriptures together, rightly so. And if you're going to teach that the rapture happens before the mark of the beast comes out. You're a liar. You're teaching lies. You're teaching false teaching. And if you hear a teacher teaching that, you need to remember that I said this. You cannot trust anything else they say. Because Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6, goes from the gospel is preached to all the world to the next thing that happens is Babylon the Great Falls and the hour of God's judgment comes. And then right after that, the mark of the beast comes out. And then right after that, the Bible says this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints and those who remain faithful to God. And then the Bible says after that, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then after that, the harvest of the earth, we who are alive and remain will be captured up to be with him in the air. That's Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. Now, something that important as, a, as another rapture that takes Christians out before all of that should be found in chapter, after chapter 6, but before verse chapter i'm sorry after verse 6 but before verse 9 in chapter 14 in other words if there was another rapture other than the harvest of the earth found in 1414 14, revelation chapter 14 verse 14 that's where your rapture is if there were a rapture before that it would have to be after revelation chapter 4 verse 6 and i see a timeline of very important events the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. That's an important event. Revelation chapter 14, 6. And then in chapter 14, 8, it says the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the great falls. That's the day of the Lord and the sixth seal of Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. That's an important event. Then the next major event to happen in the history of the earth is the, the mark of the beast comes out. That is an important event. Now, if there were to be another rapture or another harvest of the earth, don't you think it would be mentioned there? If all these important events are mentioned, of all these end time important events are mentioned right there in Revelation chapter 14, starting at verse 6, in sequence. Now, we see in chapter 14, verse 14, the harvest of the earth happens. That is your rapture. If there were another rapture that happened before the mark of the beast, it would be right where Babylon the Great Falls. Either right before Babylon the Great Falls or right after Babylon the Great Falls. There's nothing there. And everything I'm saying is consistent with what the Bible says in other chapters, in other verses, and the same stuff that these people quote to try to prove that there's a rapture that happens before the mark of the beast comes out. Those are the same scriptures that I can use to prove that the mark of the beast comes out first. One of them is what I was just talking about where Jesus said to the rich young ruler, walk away from everything. The apostles did it, Elisha did it, and then the next thing is going into captivity and being put to death for your faith. The apostles did it. Now we know Elijah was raptured up. That's a good case in point as well. Because if you make it to the point where God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, and then after that, the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith. And those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet with him in the air. Booyah! In the name of Jesus, I tell you right now that Jesus is the Lord, and I am speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I rebuke anyone who believes any differently. And here's a fact. It doesn't matter what you believe because God's going to do it exactly as he says he's going to do it. And it's described accurately in the book of Revelation, starting in Revelation chapter 14, Verse 6, and going down all the way to chapter 16, that's a sequence of events and a timeline. And 
if God's word is true, and if it really is God's word, then it will play out exactly as described right there. So what I'm telling you is this. After the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people, the next thing to happen is Babylon the Great Falls. It's the hour of God's judgment. After that, the mark of the beast comes out. There is no rapture that happens before that because then this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who remain faithful to Jesus. Those who remain, those who remain faithful to Jesus. And then blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And after that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with him in the air. Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. I'm taking from Thessal 1 Thessalonians what Paul talks about when he talks about. And then in 2 Thessalonians, Paul says, that day will not come until first, one, there be a great falling away, and two, the man of sin is revealed. The only way to know for sure who the man of sin is is when the mark of the beast comes out and this guy is the guy behind it. That's the only way. Uh, there's been theories about who the Antichrist is for centuries. Every I've I've heard there's people who are dead now that I remember when I first got saved, everybody was saying, This is the Antichrist, this is the Antichrist. Didn't turn out to be. When the mark of the beast comes out, that's when it's revealed who the Antichrist is, and that's also when the great falling away comes, and that's from second second Thessalonians. Booyah, I'm putting all the scriptures together. All you need to do is get your Bible out and study it out. And you can tell Perry Stone, slap you in Jesus' name. You can tell anybody who teaches that there's a rapture before the harvest of the earth and that that's not a sequence of events in Revelation chapter 14 starting in verse 6 is a liar and they're saying that God's word is not true. If God's word is true, then that sequence is accurate. And you know what? It doesn't matter. You can find out later when it all plays out exactly as written in the scriptures. And guess what? Unless you're 95 years old and about to die in the next two weeks, you'll probably live to see it all play out. Just saying. Amen. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Put your faith in the Lord. Aren't you excited? Aren't you excited that when the mark of the beast comes out, you're going to be able to walk away from everything. Just walk away from everything, just like, just like Jesus said to the rich young ruler. And then just like one of the apostles, you will have the opportunity to go into captivity and then die for your faith. Isn't that an awesome? Everyone who remains faithful to Jesus can be as exalted and have you can attain to a greater resurrection just like one of the apostles. Let's just say it that way. But for those who don't want to go through that, well, you better hope you die when Babylon the Great falls because that's a thermonuclear attack. And it's not Babylon, it's America the Great. And baby lawn, baby, there's that word Babylon. If you spell it out, it says baby first. Bunch of babies. Baby Christians who don't want to who are going to say that when the mark of the beast comes out, that's God's wrath and we're going to be taken out before God's wrath. That's not God's wrath. The apostle Paul went into captivity. John went into captivity. Peter was in captivity. Then they were put to death for their faith. That is not the wrath of God. That is attaining to a greater resurrection. Amen and amen. Now, I know I'm all talk. When the mark of the beast comes out, I'll probably be running back and forth, hiding up in the woods somewhere too. Okay? It's not going to be an easy time, but it will be a time of miracles, signs and wonders, and the power of God. And if you get prayed up right now and you make a decision, we will not take the mark of the beast. You and your wife and your kids, and you just pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, you'll be ready. I'm just saying, and then you'll know for sure that what I'm saying is true when Babylon the Great falls and when that sixth seal of Revelation, it starts with an earthquake and it ends with the time of no wind. You can watch my other videos, see what I'm talking about.